This is another in the first read series where I read a poem by a poet I don't know or know very little about and just read it for the sheer joy of having a first experience. I might be completely wrong. I might come back and change my mind uh, after I see more of the poet's work. This is just the first, first read, so it might not be worth anything at all in the long run. This one is by Rage Hezekiah. I'm not going to read anything about uh, Rage before I look at this work. I don't like to read that much about people before I see their work. Um, not with these. Uh, once I read their work, I like to go back and find out as much as I can about the poet and what their themes are and stuff. But the first time through, I just want to read it. So I look at this piece. It's in couplets. So there's no rhyme. Rhyme. It's not uh, traditional form. It's free or free verse or open verse. What it's called. There's a break in it and. It uh, continues on in couplets with the last one that's shorter than the other one, so maybe there's something to that in itself. Well, they're fairly short lines, so I'll just go through it. You wishing, you watch me wishing, or twice is good. Um, this one jumps out to me. This title jumps out as something I've often heard people have been told when they were kids that they have to be um, twice as good as uh, the white person who is doing the same thing. As, and I don't know if that's what's going on here. Um, if that's what's happening, you have to be twice as good in the world as a white person who just is doing it. I don't know if that's it or not. But that, that's what jumps out to me right off the bat, and it might be completely wrong. Um, I just don't know. You beg me to close my legs, try to make me lady. In my skirted youth, but I was hanging from the monkey bars. So it sounds like a parent, talking to a parent here. You're begging me to close my legs, try to make me a lady. My skirt of youth, but I was hanging from the monkey bars. This is a kind of parental pushing at kids to be something they're not, to conform to some societal um, view of what a boy or a girl or whatever you should be is being pushed on you. Um Maybe that's not what's going on. We'll see. You begged me to close my legs, tried to make me a lady. I skirted youth, but I was hanging from the monkey bars. The skirted youth here, I think, stands out as it's suggesting that this person is no longer skirted, but that's what was done there. I was hanging from the monkey bars, my scraped up knees, my skirt, billowed sail, tiny underwear, and belly exposed. So kind of, this as a kid, the speaker is almost doing the exact opposite of what they're supposed to be doing in this kind of image of what they're supposed to be like. Uh, the skirt is, you know, upside down because they're on monkey bars upside down. Tiny and wearing belly exposed. Cradled in the clamor of self-amused la laughter. So um, the speaker's laughing and like kind of cradled in that laughter itself. It's kind of protected in that own sense of uh, doing what is right. A joyous child. Joyce, even after the belt, your thick black palm, paddle hairbrushes that whittled, wooden cane voice so loud, window panes were tambourines, still. So it's still amused, like still trying to be who this person needs to be, is, after being beaten by the belt or the palm or whatever it is, a hairbrush. Um, anything that can be used to be, you know, kind of beat beat you into submission as a child. And I kind of think, you know, this first part is very much about the violence done to a, to a child to keep them in line, um, make them be something. And, you know, if I was reading against that title, I would think I would say, you know, trying to keep this person a lady to keep them safe. as a kind of way in which sometimes parents do that um, to try to keep you safe, not stand out. I am this way, vocal, unafraid. Still, I am this way, vocal, unafraid. The kind of weighted desire to speak out. Um, this is not that striking with this person being a writer and speaking out. If that is a personal story, um, the speaker is telling us that the speaker, whoever's doing this, is still vocal as, as this person was when they were a child. Then we get a, a break here, um, it's a very intentional break here. In the airport security line, so this is, this feels like much later time. In the airport security line, two, 
two uh, uni uh, uniformed women pat down my girlfriend. So her girlfriend is being patted down at this point. Breast bound, tight to ease, button down shirts onto her form. So it's a very much you know like a playing off that dress image in the beginning. That's not what's happening here with her girlfriend. Um, I'm not comfortable one says. So one of the, the two uniform women wants to pat her down because she's not comfortable with the whole situation. Which is weirdly, you know, like there's a play on, you know, gender roles here. Like uh, the women are like, having to pat down, you know, her girlfriend. But they're not comfortable with the, this situation that they're they're in because it's not what they expect. And they escort my partner to the back to a back room for further inspection. So been pulled aside. Um, you know, this happens. I've been pulled aside before. Um, not for this reason though. But it is, I think, disconcerting. And in this case it feels very much violence against this person for being who they are. We don't have enough details to go more into that, but it feels like it. I hear my own voice detach, yelling, anger emerging from a bodily history of you do not belong. So that that's suggesting what I just was just saying, that it's a you know violence um, against this uh, person for you know being different than expectations. And the speaker is being loud, vocal, unafraid, as we had in this, the end of the first section, vocal, unafraid, and the woman in a public meltdown surrounded by anonymous passengers. So again, like, the speaker's alone, kind of, in the midst of this, speaking out, this is bullshit. Nearby, my father stands like a column with a single index finger pressed against pursed lips. So her father is there. I didn't know if it was the father in the beginning. It just said, you begged me to close my legs. We could have been the father or mother, but here it is the father. It stands like a column with a single index finger pressed against pursed lips. So the father is giving her the signal to be silent, right? The finger against the lips. Attempts to ease a non-existent orchestra into de crescendo, trying to calm things down. He folds his hands at his waist the same way he behaved to avoid his father's belt or his mother's backhand. So you have the father, you know, trying to calm her. There is this kind of, like, he falls his hand his way the same way he behaved to avoid his father's belt. This is a kind of history of violence that the father is dealing with here as well. So he's been, he's been beaten into submission. And he's also seen this situation. And, you know, knowing the history of this bodily violence, but also violence against... Um, I think black people in general and just prejudice in general, you know, here in the line is trying to quiet the situation a little bit as much as he can. So you kind of have an empathy for him, even if it feels like it's the wrong thing to the speaker. Like the speaker wants to be vocal here, wanted to be vocal in the beginning, but maybe has a little bit more empathy for the father here. I'm still a scene. Tears streak my cheeks. So in the beginning, she's a scene hanging upside down. My father has already left his body. So the father is, I think, dissociating um, in a way that's caused by violence and caused by the situation. He's trying to deal with it the way he knows how, which is, you know, trying to, to put on a face to meet the faces you meet as, as you know, as another point says. So there's this kind of great empathy here. Um, to a father who it seems like at the beginning, the first part of a parent who you wanted to blame, you want to blame as a as a child. And I think the speaker even gets to that, but like at the end realizing it's kind of it's a series of violences that happen. Um and they leave marks on people that they didn't pass on. So you watch me wishing you were twice as good. A very, very interesting piece. Now I'm going to read a little bit about her. Um, uh, some of the stuff, I think, you know, kind of not surprising. Um, history here, kind of, kind of, fellow. That's, I think, sounds, sounds like very classic. 
All right. So great work. I'd like to read more of this person's work. Uh, Rage Hezekiah. Oh, I didn't mention what this was in. This is the Baltimore Review. Baltimore Review. Nice little place to, to have this. That's it.